Hi. Thanks, Kelly. You're welcome. Um, I'm so excited to be here. I was drawing everybody. This is uh, Kill the Band. Woo! And uh, yeah. here's Kelly on her own. And uh, here's, uh, I'm sorry, Denna? Denna? Demma. Oh, Demma. That was wonderful, Denna. Thank you. And I couldn't draw much of you. You were moving around so much. And it seemed like only 30 seconds. Do you usually dance more than 30 seconds? <laughs> okay, and then and Rachel, oh, she was wonderful too. Wow. It was so great to see her. Uh, Justine, you were hilarious. Thank you for, for your great stuff. Yeah. Um, and I like to say this when I do a show to a crowd of less than 250 people. If anyone would like me to draw them after the show, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll draw you after the show if you want. Um, Justine, why didn't I mention Ninja Turtles? All right. Uh, it made me think of one of my favorite jokes that I don't tell very often. Uh, you guys hear of the new Ninja Turtle, the girl? They made a new one. Yeah, I mean, you guys wouldn't have heard of her, right? You just know the classics. But they made a new one, and they named her Venus de Milo, which is a huge boner of a mistake. <laughs> because there was a female Renaissance painter who was awesome named Artemisia Gentileschi, right? Right? My <laughs> Gentileschi fans in the house? <laughs> and they had the chance to name a Ninja Turtle like they named the boys after an artist. But no, they named her the Venus de Milo. Bullshit. Which is a painting. Girls can't make art. Girls are art, kids. Yeah. That's the wrong message. <laughs> All right, that didn't go so horribly as it goes in Alaska. I tell that joke. What, there's no people who are both Ninja Turtles fans and art history majors? Come on, where's the Venn diagram for that? Wait. <laughs> Okay, let me look at my notes. Oh, so I was in Austin, and that place is crazy. But I'm really sleepy because, well, okay, Kelly likes my, my stuff. I usually do this show where I have a big piece of paper, and I flip the pages, and I tell a comedy story with the book, but I didn't bring the book. It was kind of a last-minute choice as I was leaving the house. I was like, what if uh, it just turns out to be a bad idea to bring this book? Um, it's in a portfolio, it weighs about 25 pounds. What if it, not a good idea. So I'm going to leave it behind. It could get damaged or lost or something. Turns out for six of the five nights I was in, well, that doesn't make sense. Five of the six nights I was in Austin, I was just sleeping on the street. I didn't have anywhere to stay. And so instead of the weird homeless guy, I would have been the weird homeless guy with a 35 pound portfolio bragging around with me. Everywhere. So I'm glad I didn't bring it for, for that. But, but I'm disappointed that I, that I disappoint Kelly. Uh, <laughs> but it doesn't matter if, if you're sleepy and you can't sleep because there's like a lawn sprinkler spraying water on you or Aww. drunken idiots spilling beer on you as they walk by. It doesn't matter because you're just so excited about the next day. It's going to be so fun. I'll get to see 25 bands from Iceland and Ireland and Norway. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. So what the hell? I can sit through the six minutes of hell. Because in the long run, it's, it's not going to be what I remember about Austin. Uh, I will remember asshole cameramen butting in front of the band. You ever at a like, trendy band show and there's all these cameramen who won't let you be in the front because they have to be in the front. It's so important that they're in the front. Whenever you see an awesome picture of a rock star rocking out, making the whole face ah! that picture's on the internet there. You get to see it, but keep in mind that because that picture's there, six short girls in the front row couldn't see the show at all because photographers were pushing their way around. Kelly, maybe you could hire six or seven fat photographers at the next uh, show here, you know, and then seem like you're blowing up even more than you are already are. Hi. Take pictures of you. So, do you hear that Australopithecine man ate potato chips? They found some. Yeah, um, they lasted so long because they were petrified. Oh! Oh! I'm, uh, I work with kids. I work with kindergarten, first grade kids sometimes. I do this bit where I'm the PC kindergarten teacher. Okay, let's see now, kids. And if I had a piano, you know, I'd be... Okay, so, kids, we're going to sing a song. All right? We're going to sing a song. It's called The Farmer in the Dell. All right, let's see how this goes. The first line is, The farmer in the dell, the farmer in the dell, Hi-ho, the dairy the farmer in the dell. Great, great, good job. Okay, what's the next line? The farmer takes a wife. Oh, but that's not going to work at all. Oh, no, no, no. The farmer and a female farmer choose to pool their economic resources so they can have a higher crop yield. Okay, now you. 
the farmer and the female farmer choose to pull their economic resources so they can have a higher crop yield. Hi, oh, the dairy, oh, the farmer and the... <laughs> What's this next line? The, the wife takes a child. Yeah, that's not going to work either. It's a children's song. We can just fantasize. You know, she can be, she doesn't have to be barren. <laughs> Let's make her fertile for the purposes of our song, okay? What's this next line? The child takes a nurse. Well, yeah, with parents like that. Wouldn't be surprised if they didn't take the whole hospital. I don't know why I'm looking over here. It's like I'm looking at one of my kids. <laughs> yeah! Uh, I was gonna come tell some stories about working with the kids. Um, ever heard of Audie Murphy? Yes. Yes, okay. He was a soldier in World War I, and he was an outstanding soldier, very brave. Against all odds, he jumped on a tank that had been broken down. He got out behind the gun, and he shot at every German who was coming his way. And then, like, after he scared off three tanks that were coming at him, then his backup arrived, and he just, like, strolled off while the tank exploded in the background, Rambo-style. <sighs> then they gave him, like, 20 medals. So, this kid in my class, he's uh, reading a paper about Audie Murphy, and then he has to write down the answers. Have you ever done this? It's like a bubble words. These are the words you can use. These are the words that's missing in the paper. You know, fill it in the blank. Yeah, yeah. Some of you would be really hard for you to go back to elementary school, but I, I want you to imagine it. This, this sentence says, Audie Murphy, he was a true blank soldier. And in the word box, there is the word American that he can use. So he put American. Audie Murphy, he was a true American soldier. And I was looking at it, and it's, I, it's my job kind of to get him to get the right answer. So I was trying to tell him, well, okay, it is true he was an American soldier, but you see outstanding is one of the options. I think really it's trying to get us to go with outstanding here, like Audie Murphy, was truly an outstanding soldier. Okay, okay, great. I can just imagine a week later, his dad barged into the office. What the fuck is this, man? You made my kid change the answer? Audie Murphy was an American soldier. Yeah, but the answer was outstanding. Outstanding and American are synonyms. They're the same goddamn word, right? Look at this candy bar, it's Twizzler. I mean, the uh, Snickers. That's the fucking American candy bar at that floor. It's an outstanding candy bar. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Look at this Republican sex scandal. It's an American sex scandal. So it's an outstanding sex scandal. I try to be a humanist, but it's tough because you look at some of the things humans have done. <laughs> I'm playing Xbox with my kid, and he says, uh, some kind of fighting game, and I'm just like button mashing, I don't know what the hell to do. And he says, wow, Dad, you're really good. Oh, cool. Okay, so the secret is to mix whiskey and rum. <laughs> Remember this ad on the radio? If you can spell socks, you can speak Spanish. Let's all do it together. S O C K S. I, what the hell does that say in Spanish? Idiots, right? That doesn't say anything in Spanish. It has, yes, there's some of them are saying Spanish words, but I, I wonder are there ads in Mexico, in Ireland, uh, in France? You could speak English. If you could spell puppy, then you can speak like an English uh, six. Six-year-old, okay? Everybody's still puppy. P-U-P-P-Y. <laughs> when I'm uh, driving and I see uh, a car and it doesn't have its lights on and it's, it's dark, I kind of flash my lights at them and tell them, hey man, turn on your lights. And if they don't do it, I'm like, ah, what the hell? I'm trying to save you, man. Whatever. And if they do do it, I give myself two points. And if someone else turns the light on at me to tell me to turn on my lights, I forgot. I'm like, oh shit, okay, I better take away four points. You got me. I currently have a combined life score of 3,481. <laughs> Part of me is like a hall monitor. Like, you guys aren't doing things exactly the right way. You should be doing it exactly the right way. I'm just saying. I want to go into a stadium full of like 40,000 people and say, I'm here to arrest everyone who hasn't disposed of a battery properly. <laughs> You're all under arrest. Come with me. <laughs> I 
So what's up with vampires? <laughs> and they're assholes, right? It's not enough that they gotta suck your blood, turn you into a vampire sucking hellion forever immortal. You think if Dracula turned some of his lovers into immortal beings, he'd have some regrets about it. Because it's not like Facebook, you can't just unfriend her. She's gonna be around forever. She's gonna be around centuries after Facebook is forgotten, begging you to hook up again. I wonder in the year 3000, Dracula will be remembering times so like, well, the year 2000 to 2008, there was some fucked up times. I was such a slut. I mean, it was hard not to be. Vampires were all the rage. Everybody loved them. I, I, it was so easy. <laughs> Just tell a girl on Facebook, I'm a vampire. I'm the real thing. <laughs> Why did vampire hunters bring around gar a cross and garlic? The garlic soup to back up in case Jesus turns out to not be real? <laughs> now, if they're just as affected each other, I'd bring the garlic because then you're post apocalypse. Chili isn't boring. <laughs> Why do stalagmites hate stalactites? Because they're stuck up. <laughs> Sometimes I stay up late at night wondering what's the. What's the worst that could happen? My wife's terrified over uh, the possibilities of a nuclear exchange, you know? Fall out, killing everybody, I can't sleep. But sometimes I stay up late at night wondering about, what's the worst put down? Goofus or doofus? <laughs> what did the plant say when his leaves started to bleed? My stomata has stigmata. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, one more joke about kids and I'll be gone. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Way to go, Kelly, for having a $5 show. Where can you find a $5 show? Woo! Awesome. <laughs> just want to see some shitty band that sucks, barely knows how to play their instruments, and then... 10 bucks. What? 12 bucks. 18 bucks. Oh, man. They hardly play their instruments at all. They just touch some buttons on their looping pedal. That's the whole show. <laughs> Oh. Okay, so uh, I'm working with kids and it's like, say, what? What? <laughs> so there's like six pieces of blue paper, and there's one kid, and, and there's, there's, there's seven kids, there's six pieces of blue paper, there's one paper that's green. So I'm handing out the papers, and the kid doesn't get the one he wants. He gets a green one. He's like, why do I get a green one? What the hell? I want to trade. And there's no trade, you just get what you get, okay? And then like the six-year-old, she said, yeah, you get what you get, and you don't throw a fit. That's wise. These kids could teach adults a few things. Like the girls are going to my swinger parties. Jeez. I told that joke one time, and I had, a, had like a heckler, and I could hear him like whisper, oh, he's not a swinger. Can you tell? Really? Because I work with kids? You think I'm not a swinger? Come on. <laughs> I just think someday maybe I'll go before a judge, you know, I'm accused of some horrible crime. And uh, I got a backup plan, you know. The judge is like about to lay down the sentence. He'll just say, it's all right, man. You don't understand because you're not a swinger. And then the judge will be like, oh, that hurts. Maybe I could be if I found the right two girls and the right goat. <laughs> All right, thanks guys. <laughs>